how to make real web fluid. So, a couple things. Um, it's taken so long to do this because I got married, I had a kid, I broke my back. So, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. But anyway, um, please, for the love of God and your children, do not ever use M-E-K. Uh, you, will, you will die. Um, it is a neurotoxin and it absorbs into your skin goes to your brain it causes permanent brain damage permanent brain damage everyone keeps suggesting on the videos oh yeah he just uses MEK don't it is a solvent it's a very powerful solvent um, I don't know if it can eat skin but I do know that it is enough to absorb into your bloodstream and then go through the blood brain barrier go into your brain and not leave we don't want that so instead, we're using two kinds of solvent, or two different kinds of solvent here. Uh, this one is acetone, it's just generic, 100% acetone, you get it at Walmart. It's stupid cheap at Walmart. This is the lemonin, and um, this is a industry strength cleaner that is ironically actually also used um, in small doses to fight different kinds of cancer, which is pretty crazy. And this stuff is made out of concentrated extract from orange and lemon peels. I think lemons have a higher concentration, limes have a higher concentration than oranges, but it smells like oranges, so it's really funny. So, um, it's really stupid simple, and so far I think there's only four people in the entire world that have figured out how to do this. Um, and it took years of playing around, wasting hundreds of dollars playing around with different chemicals. Um, I do not have a chemistry background, but I know enough about chemistry and how it works to figure out what needs to be done. And I came to the same conclusion a lot of other people do. Styrofoam is a super cheap and easy poly to use. It's a plastic, it's an artificial plastic, or a non-organic and um, it breaks down with acetone. That's why whenever you spray paint uh, on a styrofoam piece, if you spray, thing, if you spray paint things, um, it gets eaten. There's acetone and other solvents inside of some spray paints and it breaks down the styrofoam. I can't stress this enough. When you're taking apart styrofoam pieces, be really careful. My mom knows someone that actually inhaled one of these little tiny nodules here super tiny got in their lungs to this day this is over 40 years ago it's still in his lung and he's had countless surgeries just to stay alive so be careful when you take apart styrofoam um there are different kinds of styrofoams there's uh polystyrene polyfills and a whole bunch of other ones, but just use the ones that are the little puff balls. This is expanded, I think, styrofoam. There's expanded and extruded and cast. Um, extruded, they superheat different kinds of styrofoam, basically melt it together and push it through into a tiny mold. Uh, that's where we get insulation foam. Um, expanded, they take itty bitty tiny pellets and then I think superheat them for a split second in a vacuum and then they release the vacuum and it sucks back out and they get puffed out into these little balls um, just don't breathe them in they're not you don't want to do that so another thing that I'm working on I would not suggest doing this until someone else figures out how to do it like me or someone else um, I made a real flamethrower using liquid butane and these things. They are CO2 cartridges that come apart. They are really, really expensive. I think they're like 30 or $40 each. So R&D has been a little bit of a pain. But basically the idea is you take the web fluid that is too viscous without the acetone. You need both of these solvents. You cannot make this without both solvents. And I did it by accident. Like a lot of other chemistry, it happens by accident. You can have all the math in the world, all the background you want in the world. Most of the stuff that we know, someone went, whoops, and then there you go. So anyway, the idea is you fill this about halfway with the web fluid, and the other half with liquid butane. 
butane eats styrofoam as well, which means you don't have to use acetone. So the breakdown between this is this solvent kind of holds it in suspension in a way, and then this solvent breaks it down really, really fine. So if you can find a safe secondary solvent that evaporates quicker than acetone, like butane, you can have the lamp come out instantly and just vaporize into a, or have the solvent vaporize and then have the solids left behind and the solids would just be the styrofoam. I, through mere accident, accidentally mixed up some plastic wrap into the mix with acetone. For some reason, some of the molecules from the plastic of the plastic wrap bond to the acetone and then are left in suspension. You can pull out this bit of whatever is left over and you will be left with some sort of uh, kind of sticky solution that you can actually add to the rest of the batch and it makes the web fluid stupid stringy. This is going to make a lot of people upset because of the way physics work you will never be able to swing from building to building using acetone, the lemonin, and styrofoam. It's not happening. And unless there's a real Tony Stark out there somewhere, it, it's not, or Peter Parker, it's not happening at all. Um, a lot of really cool videos are out there that show the physics of it and your arms would rip right off after like the second swing because of the pendulum effect. No. Um, anyway, so I'm going to get to it and I'm sure this part you've been waiting for, but the other parts were super necessary so if you skipped to this part, you need to go back and watch or you're going to hurt yourself. So, two ways you can do this. You can either put the lemon in inside a glass container. Don't use a plastic container. It has to be glass. Um, and then you can slowly add the styrofoam. Or you can add the acetone first and add a bunch of styrofoam really, really fast problem with that is you have to figure out the balance. There is no perfect equatable amount of this plus this equals this. You have to play around with it. Every delaminin is going to be slightly different. Every acetone is going to be slightly different. And then the composition of all the polystyrene styrofoam is going to be a little bit different. It shouldn't be, but it is because there aren't a whole lot of industry standards on a bunch of different things. So, and watch it in action here. Again, be careful with those little balls. They will kill you. Or at least give you really bad problems. So, it takes a lot of styrofoam to make just a little bit of this stuff. So let's try the acetone first. I don't have a whole lot left. I had to clean up some paint that I spilled. The best way to do that was with acetone. I was making some Star Trek stuff and the paint surface messed up so I had to soak those in acetone. Oh, watch, this is cool. It just, you can get closer. My friend Christian's recording this. You can touch all of this stuff, it is safe. Um, I know the chemicals that are used to create this are not so safe, but once it's in this form, it is safe. I have very strict protocols and cleaning and sanitation and whatnot whenever I'm making anything at all. Um, and I would argue this is safe. You can get it on your hands. You don't wanna eat with your bare hands after touching this without washing your hands thoroughly. But if it touches you a little bit, it's not M-E-K. So it's fine, or mostly fine anyway. If you do want to add the plastic wrap, you can add that into a um, clear plastic cup or glass container with the acetone. Do not use the red Solo or Soho cups or whatever they're called. Uh, acetone will eat it. I've got this fiberglass rod I'm going to use to mix everything in. 
um, instead of using my bare hands. But if you look, it's doing some weird stuff to this. And it's making it goopy. And the residuals, you can add to your mix. It's really cool. So the acetone is going to break down whatever parts are inside of the plastic wrap that are acceptable to use for this process and leave everything behind that we don't want. See, it's, it's almost melting it. Because it's, if you were mixing this yourself, you'd be able to tell, ooh, that's not, that ain't natural. At some point, your solvents will become super saturated, which is what you want. It does not matter, it seems, because I've tried it both ways. Which one you use first, I'm going to go ahead and add the lemon in. For the love of God, and all things holy, do not get the lemon in on your bare skin and touch your eyes. I did that by accident, and for six months, six, it was burning my skin. And I had a chemical burn for six months. And, um... Mm -mm, I won't do it. So you can see it's breaking down further. And in the end, I've got some that's already mixed up. You want this kind of yellow liquid. This is super saturated, the lemonin with the acetone and the styrofoam. This batch does not have a whole lot of this goopy stuff, if any at all. Like I said, that was pure accident. Um, but it does make your overall product string out more and it's really cool but you do need a lot of styrofoam and there is actually more acetone than the the lemonin which is why if you were to use the liquid butane with the co2 cartridge um it would work better than using just a little spray bottle here because less acetone, faster reaction with the air. And uh, yeah, so these little uh, bottles, they're on Amazon, they're like five bucks, they're made of glass. They're too small, I think they only hold three or five milliliters, and that's such a small amount, it isn't even funny, it's just unusable. But for the sake of the video, it should show, because I think that's what I used in one of the other videos. If it comes out and it's not turning into a cobweb type stuff, you did not add enough acetone. It needs to be almost water-like. And a lot of people think that that means add water. Don't. Uh, water. Uh, the foam sits in suspension in the water. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. And it gets all gloppy. By all means, if you want to go in and do it, it's not going to work. So there are still some particulates in there. Um, there shouldn't be, so I don't have enough acetone. Like I said, there's more acetone than anything else. Or at least less of the orange solvent here, the lemon. I didn't say orange, it smells like oranges in here. It smells amazing. I don't think this fiberglass rod is going to affect any of the chemical composition. Um, the lemonin and acetone do not break down the fiberglass. So I can't see that messing up this experiment here. So now, we slowly pour some of it in. If you want, you can strain this out. Um, I have a bunch of UV resin printers, and whenever I get the resin, it comes with filters. You could filter it out, but those little chunks should dissolve when I add acetone. I'll tell you what though, the acetone is... No bueno. Oh, also, don't be an idiot like I was, and 
open up your web fluid if it's been sitting for several months and be right over it because the gases inside have been sitting in there for a long time and they've accumulated. It's hot in here and it burned my nose. I thought I was going to have a brain bleed. It was, oh my God. Anyway, so, oh, that's the web fluid. I need the acetone. So you want about half of the mixture and this is It's about the same color. There's probably a little more more acetone in this already. It's quite liquid. It's actually not liquid enough. So I'm going to finish filling this up. And if, I don't know if you can look, but if you look closely, it turns a little bit more white. That is the solution breaking down further. See, there's a separation. So now, uh, take this end, put it up against the glass, poke it in a couple times. Uh, the purpose of that is to make sure that the, the straw portion doesn't get clogged up. Give it a shake. See that big glob in there? We don't want a glob. You just keep shaking it, it will dissolve. If you think, oh no, I messed up. What did I do wrong? It's not you. Just keep shaking it. And here we go. And the mixture is in just like that. It's all broken down. It sends this is all the same stuff. I can just mist it into here, see what happens. So, I don't know how well you can see. So, it's not making as much webbing here because it's not evaporating quick enough. If it was hotter in here and you gave it more time to really saturate the solution, the solvents, with the styrofoam, um, you would have a thicker solution that has more, it's, it's suspended more. That said, let's go ahead and add some of this mixture. And it's just, you leave behind the plastic. And it's not a lot. You do not get a lot of this solution. I might put a graphic up on the screen of why this works. But I might not deal with that. Just know that it's adding a little bit of the molecules from the plastic wrap, which is a different kind of uh, poly mix. I'm gonna add a little bit more styrofoam here. And I'll grab that block. So because we did add more acetone from that plastic cup there, which none of this plastic cup has broken down. None of it. This kind of plastic cannot be broken down by acetone. I use these cups to uh, mix acetone with paint and there are never any issues. I don't know if... Uh, I'm going to show what happens with the cartridge. I might. We'll see what happens here in a minute. Oh, here. Do a close-up real quick. Another way you can test to make sure that there was enough styrofoam inside of it in the first place is if it starts stringing. And you have to wait for it to uh, evaporate. So I'm not sure how well that's picking up. There's little cobwebs there. 
So honestly, I may have mixed this up too much. So I'm not gonna add more acetone to this mix. I'm just gonna put it back inside the container and then dump it back in here. Like I said, this is a matter of playing around with it. Once you do have a nice mixture, you can keep it in a uh, acetone container because at the very least, we know that the acetone can't eat the container that it came out of. This time I'm filling it up all the way because I'll probably put too much acetone in it the first time. Yeah, see? Look at that. Now imagine this inside of one of these cartridges. If you look really closely, I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see little droplets coming down. The reason that's happening is there's actually still too much acetone in it. But unfortunately, you need that much solvent, secondary solvent, that's safe in order to break it down. However, I'm pretty sure that if we go ahead and use the cartridges mixed with the, uh, or rather added the butane to the cartridge, you would have this really awesome steady stream of web fluid. Um, Please do not let kids play with this. Uh, we do a crap ton of charity events as superheroes. So like we visit the children's hospital, we do different parades with the veterans and whatnot. Um, we see we go to the doctor's hospital and visit the burn unit for the kids and the adults there. And the the thing of it is, it, these are chemicals. You're messing with chemicals. Um, like I said, I accidentally got this stuff next to my eye. And for six months, the chemical burn was so bad that it gave me a rash through my wedding. And I had to be real careful not to touch it because it, it kept bruising the tissue. And it, it just, it wasn't fun. And I don't want you guys to go through that. Like I said, um, I'm sure I'll put some sort of weird disclaimer like, don't drink this stuff. I mean, it's, it's on these containers. Don't purposefully pour it all over anyone. Don't spray people uh, for obvious chemical burn reasons. And maybe one day uh, there'll be a safer solution. But don't, but there's not, do not use MEK. That's, that's the number one thing. You can get this stuff on your hands all day long. Just wash it with um, isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol breaks the bonds of oils. This is a oil-based solvent. Um, you can wash your hands with acetone to help remove the this stuff here, the, the mix. So it's not a big deal if you get it on your skin. But once it evaporates, you can start seeing the plastic residue, which is that. Which is cool. And it's fun. And if you want to add this to your Spider-Man costume, awesome. I'm working on a web shooter specifically to use these so you guys can buy all that stuff, throw it together. I don't think oh, I would ever sell the web fluid. You guys can make it yourself. The, the mixture is too finicky to really sell as a singular product. Um, but the rest of the stuff is super cool. I've made the web shooter. And I intended on casting it out of tin. Because it's really easy metal to melt. But I've got these really cool resin 3D printers. And I think they will actually be strong enough to support the tension required to pull on the cartridge because on the end there's a little brass nozzle and it pushes into the whole thing in fact let's let's see what happens i don't think much of anything so we're gonna add this stuff to the bottom portion I hope this doesn't mess it up. These things are expensive. We only want it filled up halfway. At the most. Okay. 
the entire unit, not this. You want to fill that up pretty much all the way. There is a rubber gasket on here. Um, I don't know if you've seen the flamethrower video, but it is enough to keep the pressure all together there. Make sure it is completely tightened. Because, holy crap. I don't think you want this in your eyes. Um, I don't know how this is going to work. The way that you would use these cartridges in the first place is you need to expel the air that's inside of it that's trapped. Well, we just made it really hard to do that. So I'm going to do it to where it's pointed this way. I'm going to push the nozzle down while filling a little bit of it and then dipping it upside down to fill it up the rest of the way because as the valve is open, it will spray stuff. And I don't know what's gonna happen with that. I can feel it bubbling on the inside. So the reason you need the uh, chamber, I can hear evacuating the air inside. The reason you want it to empty out it's cool. All of the air that is not butane is the atmosphere pressure differential inside of the container is different from what's out here in the cans. And if it's equalized, you can't fill it up with butane. So now I'm going to press the valve down while filling it in with this. I don't know how well that worked. I don't I think I just released all my liquid because that's about what it looks like. I'm gonna try filling it up sideways. Because I don't think I need in the press the valve. <laughs> that was probably not necessary at all. I don't hear it leaking from this a whole lot, so it's probably filling it up. All right, I hear the liquid butane. I don't know if it actually has the um, the web fluid stuff. Um, let's go ahead and open up the door here, because I don't know what's gonna happen. It may just shoot the butane out, or it may shoot the web fluid stuff out too. Looks like it's just butane, guys. Okay, so let's try that again real quick. And it's no longer under pressure. You can open it. <coughs> you alright? Yeah. I'm not going to look directly at it, but I can see this is cool. Some of the butane is still eating the solution. So I know that's going to work. Uh, my hands are covered in this stuff, so... I don't know. I'm going to clean that off. Except for just the acetone. Excuse the cat who's not supposed to be an outside cat and he thinks he is. Typically, again, like I said, you would do this upside down. I'm going to hold the top up here and release the valve. All right, I can feel it bubbling, so the butane is going up through the liquid and evacuating the chamber of all of the... There we go. All right, so as soon as the uh, material starts coming out the nozzle, you're good. This does not really have any pressurized butane. Now we need to pressurize it. I'm going to come back with this. Push real hard. Um, well, honestly, you should be wearing gloves. I need to. Uh, from what I understand, some butane can absorb through your skin. And that can cause some issues. There's some concern with uh, Alzheimer's. I don't know if there's enough studies to 
really prove that. I hear a lot of liquid in here. This is going to be cool because remember, all we really have to do is make the liquid aerosolize very quickly. I said that right. Let's try again. How you going, cat? Are you going to get over you? Let's actually go over here in the light. And here, and point that way. So come over here. All right, let's see. So there's not enough pressure with the butane. Um, there actually is not a whole lot of butane in here. Uh, butane makes these cool waves so uh, you can't well you can kind of smell butane but you can't see it unless there's light coming through and it distorts the light um, so don't get into these yet I'll keep working on that but that is how you make web fluid so uh, stay safe and have fun